Shalom. Good evening. Uh, this is Maurice Sklar. I'm back again with you. I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm, uh, we have a beautiful day here in, in uh, Santa Maria. Just, just lovely. And, um, but I uh, just wanted to share with you a couple of uh, verses, just to encourage you and and uh, and continue uh, teaching today on uh, Romans uh, chapter four and five. Hopefully, we'll get get through that. And uh, uh, I'm thinking, at least at this point, kind of alternating between a prophetic day, you know, and a more of a teaching day. I really do believe that. We just need that kind of line-on-line -line teaching that uh, I used to really enjoy so much. And we need to get back to just taking, you know, going through the Bible, a scripture at a time. And nothing can replace God's Word. You know, you can't, you can't make things, uh, you know, experiences or visions or gifts of the Spirit or experiences uh, of any, you know, uh, no matter how spectacular they are, it can't replace the daily feeding on God's Word. God's Word has been given to us not only as our plumb line and our, uh, you know, what we can know is truth, but it also feeds us. It's the bread from heaven. It is the, uh, it's what sustains our spiritual life. It's food for us. And so, but I wanted, there's a couple of scriptures uh, the Lord put on my heart as I was praying the Spirit uh, earlier this morning, and uh, <clears throat> actually into the afternoon as well. Uh, and they're both in the book of Hebrews, and I just want to look at them. The first is Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. So if you have your Bibles, just turn with me there, and, uh, and I'll read it with you. Um, God bless you, everyone that's tuning in right now, and Lynn and Sally, I see you here, and I suppose I could have more of a list here. Oh, David Williams, you are number one here. Doris Mintz, you know, Mintz is a Jewish name. Mint, uh, thinking of the violinist Shlomo Mintz, uh, he was a great. He is a great violinist, and worked with my teacher Dorothy Delay for some time. But uh, that's probably, uh, uh, so have to let me know. And as always, I pray for every one of you that, that makes a little comment or a post, or especially if you have a prayer request, and I, I take it seriously. It's an assignment God gave me. So I will always pray for you after the broadcast. I'll wait a little while. I found that's better because some people can't watch it live. So I wake about three hours or so, and then... I will pray through, uh, no matter how long it takes, it took me almost an hour last night, because I, I wanted to take time to really, really um, make sure I cover you. Um, God just put a real love in my heart for, for you, as if you, we were in a church building together, you know? Uh, it just, I care. I, uh, you know, that's Jesus' love. He, he, said, he told Peter, feed my sheep. He said, uh, take care, tend my sheep, tend my lambs. You know we're God's little lambs. We're His little children, and He 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 wa He doesn't want us to be afraid. And we're seeing something at on a scale we've never seen before in the earth with this global uh, global type of uh, shutdown. And uh, so anyway, let's look right now at Hebrews chapter. Three, and we're going to look at verse 13. These were two admonitions he told me uh, what this one, first one is. It says here, <clears throat> But exhort one another today. But exhort one another daily. And uh, some modern, more modern translations wouldn't say exhort, it would say encourage. Well, encourage is a part of exhort, exhorting or exhortation, but really the, the whole book of Hebrews is exhorting us. It's a little bit more, I think, ad, admonish would be a better translation, or exhort also has a corrective element in it. 
and it is an activating element. Exhortation, we don't have see much of that in our charismatic world today, which is somebody getting up and it's stirring you up to do what you already know, to do it. See, God's Word doesn't profit you if you don't mix faith with it and you don't put it into action. And so uh, when so the book of Hebrews is a book of exhortation, trying to get you to, well, not trying to, but God will raise up people. Sometimes they're exhorters. They may not even be an actual five-fold ministry gift, but they exhort you. They'll get up and tell you, you know, uh, and, and inspire you or, or stir up the gifts that are in you. You know, Paul told Timothy, stir up that which is already in you. So exhortation is important, particularly in difficult times. And the writer of Hebrews, I believe was Paul, we don't know for absolute sure, but I, it, it's a part of his revelation. So I think it's from, it's the same, it's an amazing book. But it, it says here, uh, it, and it's actually, if you, it's so hard to take just one verse out of context, if you will. But if you go one verse back in verse 12, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another, encourage one another, stir one another up, uh, uh, you know, daily. And the, the word that really came forth was daily. We need uh, a constant reminding, encouraging, exhorting while it is called today. Now, I believe that's a prophetic reference to uh, before the, the, especially at the end of times when we're, we're coming into this midnight hour now and it's going to be a time that will not be called today. You see, today, that's a reference. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Call upon him now. God is a right now, today. But today is also, we're, we're in the middle between the sixth day, prophetically, and the seventh day. The seventh day is the Shabbat rest, the Sabbath rest, the kingdom of God coming to the earth, or the third day of the church. We've had two days. Remember the parable of uh, the... Uh, the 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 man who who brings uh, the, the 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 good Samaritan that's it who brings uh, the the man that was half dead and he you know he brings him into the inn and he has two uh, coins two pieces of money and he said here I will pay for his care for two days and I'm coming back the third day that's a reference prophetically to where we're at right now, the dawning of the third day or the seventh day of since creation. All right. So while it is called today, when in other words, when there's when there's all this battle and war and time of trouble and all this, exhort one or daily, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we need each other. And this fits with the next scripture I'm going to read because I believe God is saying, don't, don't uh, separate. Don't close down the churches. Don't do that. Some way or other, you got to get together, even if it's virtual, even if it's uh, our, our local assemblies, our congregations, our churches. We need each other. We need to be with each other. And... Uh, you know, I believe in obeying the law of the land, but on the other hand, uh, you know, I don't think that I don't think that we should just hibernate either. I, I we must we need each other. Just like uh, if you can think of a you know a really made fire, you know, that's in the fireplace. Uh, uh, we were up north in Israel, uh, and we stayed in a kibbutz, a fancy one, it's beautiful. Um, and Karim, I think it was, and went in in the north, uh, and they had this wonderful fireplace in the in the lobby there. And I didn't go uh, touring one day; I just sat in front of this beautiful fire in the lobby there. Uh, and they made it; they made it in about uh, mid afternoon, and they stacked the little logs up, you know, the little little pieces of you know logs about that big, not. 
and they, they made it like a teepee like they do in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or that. and they and they put it up like that and they were all together and then they put some uh, kindling uh, and some uh, probably it looked like gunpowder actually I don't it wasn't gunpowder but it was some kind of powder that helped it start and that was the most beautiful fire and it not only lasted long but every there was air there was everything we and we need each other in order to stay on fire, especially when you see the times of trouble. So I think that goes with this scripture, and this is another one, and I think the the Spirit is saying this to the whole body right now, the whole church. Uh, it's, it, it's so important. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. It says here, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But, again, we have this word in exhorting or encouraging, exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see, again, the day approaching. So, uh, but that's actually in, also in context, if you go from verse 22, listen to some of, uh, you know, Listen to this. This is this is an exhortation. This is a warning for the for us new covenant believers. That means there's a danger that we could could be deceived or fall away. Or just like if you took one of those logs out of that fire, uh, in that you know we were there a couple of week three weeks ago, and if you take that log out, doesn't matter how. Uh, on, why you know how hot it was because it was in the fire you take it out to take the log out and then uh it won't be long before it'll it'll cool off and the fire will go out because god made it so we need each other we need each other and you know i'm not i'm not super religious about this but i know you know when i get together especially with our our community here you know just I might go out, we might go out and have some, you know, uh, go to the, uh, get some tri-tip uh, at the, you know, in Slow or uh, in San, San Luis Obispo, or we go out to dinner, or we go somewhere, and just being with our, say, with uh, our friends here, Casey and Lene, or uh, or whoever we're, we're with here, there's something that happens, we need each other, so I understand about the corona thing and the distancing but don't be so far apart you <laughs> you're see when the church is isolated we're much weaker when we're together we're strong and and we hear what the spirit's saying through all of us so i think even our uh uh the healing rooms here we're going to have a uh, I, i'm not sure what it is zoom zoom it's some sort of way of talking together. So I think we're doing that on. Uh, I, I, I we're doing we're doing on our, the prayer meeting day, and you know it'll be nice to just see each other and talk. And I hope it works. But uh, as soon as possible, physically assemble yourselves. The Bible he says assemble yourselves together. So be careful. You know, uh, Doctor Summerall, uh, Lester Summerall once said. Uh, the banana that leaves the bunch is the first to get peeled, <laughs> and he's he and he mentioned about the straggling zebra in the herd in the African wildlife movies. That's the one that the lion is. He's always waiting for something because in the herd or the water buffalo or whatever, they're they're very strong together. We're, in fact, the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But it never says, Jesus didn't say the gates of hell will not prevail against the believer. I've met a number of people um, that have, for whatever reason, they've gotten isolated, many, many, in the church. And uh, many of them have experienced defeat because they didn't have, they lost their first love or they, it just, it's very easy to just, your fire you got to stay on fire so we have to exhort one another and 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 it's important and to be involved you know right now maybe you, 
you know, if you, you absolutely can't go out, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure whether we should do civil disobedience in that area. I think we should have church services, actually, um, at least in some way. So you can just take that and or whatever. I, I heard the Lord just, he said, don't forsake the assembling yourselves together. You, we need each other right now more than ever. Okay, so that's just... Uh, but it's in the context here. Uh, listen to this. Because we have a high priest and God's made a new way for us to go into his presence. And then it says, Let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, I prefer washed, washed in the blood, sprinkled and washed from an evil conscience. What is an evil conscience? An evil conscience is a, a conscience that condemns you. See, accuses you, condemns you. Uh, uh, a negative, defeated outlook in life or your conscience telling you you have failed because the devil comes, especially the sensitive ones like me and probably you. And If you're sensitive at all and you love God, then... The accuser loves to take people like God's people like that and start telling them they failed, they're condemned, then you committed the unpardonable sin, there's no way back for you. But because we, but it says we're not to have sin and condemnation, guilt, conscience, consciousness, because we've been washed in the blood. We are. We are no longer condemned. There's no condemning sentence that can be carried out against us before the Supreme Court of Heaven. Jesus bore our condemnation. So this is how you can tell whether it's God correcting you and exhortation's good and you need to correct and, and pruning. Sometimes God will come and prune your, your tree or whatever. Uh, that's good too. But it's always a correction of something you did or behavior it's never god will never come to you and say you are guilt you are bad he, he and you can know it's the devil if you just feel like guilty and condemned but you don't have anything specific that you can do to change it god will he'll convict you and he'll tell you you know what that's not the best way to do it or he'll correct you or he'll he'll say uh okay that was you hurt you hurt your spouse or say or you shouldn't have said that or okay that's a specific thing it's a something you can correct and you can repent of and say i'm sorry that i did such and such please forgive me and then you know what god comes and when he forgives he wipes it clean and that's what the blood does the blood of jesus washes us it sprinkles us we are made clean once and for all and daily we also wash i tell people i take a bath every day or I take a shower if you will in the spirit realm the first thing i do is ask god to wash me and cleanse me in his blood and then the second thing it says here it's also here for and our bodies washed with pure water now uh this is important uh <clears throat> because it's our bodies that remember when when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples and Peter felt condemned. And so he said, not just my feet, but my hands and my head. In other words, everything. I, I, and he said, no, my, basically my blood cleanses you positionally. In other words, God has forgiven our sin before and we are not condemned and we have an advocate. When we miss it, we confess our sins. He is faithful daily or constantly to cleanse you and wash you. It's not a one-time thing. It's a constant, it's like a shower from heaven of, of his blood. And also take a, take a continual, just stay under that wonderful fountain of the water of the word. The water uh, in this, I believe, context, uh, pure water is referring to this gathering together between believers it's the word cleansing you it's sitting under a uh, good uh, wholesome encouraging bible teaching that that feeds you so and it washes 
It washes the sins of the flesh away. And we need that too. And it's not just a one-time thing. We, we, we need it all the time because we're living in these bodies and we're not in God's presence in the sense like we will be without, without we're still in the earth. We still have to fight things that come from the curse and kind of like Corona. Uh, you know what? There's, I tell you this, that means crown because of the way it appears under a microscope. This virus has certain things that, that stick out of it, make it, uh, I think that's why they call it that. But <clears throat> the, uh, uh, instead, you know what? Let God crown you. Let him crown you with healing. Let him crown you with righteousness. Let him crown you and cleanse your conscience. That's the inside. We we took communion yesterday, and I now I took it personally this morning. He didn't tell me to do it uh, online today, so I'm just trying to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I'll do that. And he just went and said, Go through this and and just let me talk to him. So okay, verse 23. Then. So we have this cleansing and this constant walk of cleansing, even our feet. The the walk when Jesus cleansed uh, the disciples' feet is talking about our walk in this earth. We're going to get dirty, uh, you know, but not on the inside. The blood washes you clean on the inside, but the water of the word just keeps you, your flesh in a place where you're cleansing. It's a cleansing. It's a sanctification work going on all the time you know stay out of the condemnation of the devil but let be open to let God correct you and he'll always give you uh, he'll always give you certain things that okay you and he might expose something or that's a hidden pride area or that's a well you know you should have been more thoughtful it's almost always in the area of love and very often it's family because that's the hardest the family test, the home, and all of you are home now. So you got to sit there and all the children are home and you're thinking, please, please open the schools. Well, it's not, and yet you do have family time. So that's good. All right. So it's not going to be too long. I don't believe this will last um, terribly long, this quarantine thing. Anyway, so verse 23 then says, let us hold fast the confession of our faith, the profession, confession of our faith without wavering. Now that has to do with your mouth. That has to do with don't say everything you feel because very often you're feeling if it, if it would hurt somebody, including yourself. Don't curse the power of blessing and cursings in your mouth. So because this wonderful work of the blood and the word of God washing you. Okay, watch your mouth now. He says, hold fast. That means hold on. Even there's, there's, there's a pressure on your tongue all the time. There's a pressure. The enemy comes and tries. He wants your word so he can, if you can, if, if you don't want it, don't say it. Don't say it. I want to say it. Don't say it. Don't say anything that you don't want to have happen because the power of life and death is in our tongues, especially as new creations. So your words matter. Your words really matter. Uh, and that's why, you know, the best thing very often is if you are if you can't think of anything good to say, just keep your mouth shut. Just, boy, that's hard. I tell you what, you want to say it so bad sometimes, especially if... You, if your spouse has irritated you and gotten you into an emotional uh, getting frustrated or, and you want to say all kinds of things. I'll say my say and have my peace. You know, no, don't do that. Don't do that because then you have to then you have to go back and say, Lord, cleanse me. What was it that Isaiah said when he encountered Isaiah 6? He said, first thing he said, there was a coal that came. But first he said, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the presence of people of unclean lips. And I, my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts, the Holy One of Israel. And you realize we can sin with our, our, our tongue and we can sin with our actions. And it comes from thoughts. And 
Satan's greatest power is suggestion. He'll fire an fire a, a, an arrow at you, and it has poison in it. But if you don't say it, it won't. But he wants to get you to say it. He'll put pressure on your mouth. So hold fast your confession of what? Of our faith or God's word. Keep God's promises in your mouth. And you know what? You'll be amazed how much better life becomes if you don't say everything that you think and feel. Because we do have authority. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And uh, we're saved by speaking Jesus as Lord and believing it in our hearts. And we receive everything from heaven through faith. So the confession of our faith is very important. What we are saying all the time. Okay, so hold fast. Why? Without wavering. Okay. In other words, don't go back and forth in your, in your faith. Just hold it. Hold on. Hold on. Just hold on to your tongue. And make your words sweet, my pastor used to say, because you're going to have to eat them. You're the total of your talking yesterday. So, this is, For he is faithful that promised. And verse 24 says, And let us consider one another. Okay, so now, now the focus is on your brothers and sisters in the body, one another, others. And again, we have this word that's similar to the meaning of exhort. And I like the King James here, to provoke unto love and to good works. So that's what exhortation does. So you need a change of idea. You know, don't say, well, no, you're judging me. No, 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 no. God is, God is, uh, He's helping you. He he wants to bring you to a higher level. Make him, and it's all it's good. It's good to be corrected. Don't despise correction. It's good. If it's done in the wrong way, it's not good. But it is good if it's done by the Holy Spirit. There's no condemnation or the wrong kind of judging, but to correct things that are allowing the enemy into your life and to close those doors. That's good. And we need that. And we need each other for that. Okay? So, then he says, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. In other words, there's a lot of hurt, offended members of the body. You, if you've been hurt or offended, first thing you want to do is separate from... But we're a body... And we need each other. So, so if you isolate yourself, you're way, 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 way more weak than if you're together. So somehow just keep your keep keep your your connections to the body. That's very, very important right now. We need each other and we need to uh, we need this constant infusing of grace. God is separating the darkness and the light. That doesn't mean he hates some. And he does. It means if you stay in the light, that's the place of safety. When you stay in the, in the proper place in the spirit and where God puts you. You know, sometimes I want to do things, you know, I want to go to a certain church or be a part of it or, you know, or whatever. And God said, no. And then I tried even here, and God said, "No, the healing rooms. I want you there. That's that's your. That's where I want. That's that's what God. And we have different. He'll put you where He wants, and and that's the best place for you. So, so just try your best to to your local local community is important. So I just pray, Father, that we will." not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Help us. We need each other. Help those that have been isolated right now. And I pray, Lord, that you overturn this situation so we can, we can have to gather together in your name. So please, please make a way and, and lift this, lift this uh, quarantine situation. Lord, help us.
We just curse that virus and command it to die in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. So let's go over. This isn't going to be a real, this is more of a teaching day. I hope that's all right with you. But it'll help you. So I want to go continue in Romans. All right. And how long are you going to do this daily? Well, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I might just continue till the Lord comes. If you like it, I mean, if you don't, if you don't like me, I, you know, I'll still do whatever. But, you know, encourage me if you if you think this is something that, you know, I've never done anything like this before. Uh, it's almost like a, a church, but you're not. Uh, <laughs> it's virtual, you know. But one thing for sure, you can't get sick this way. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to make it easy for you. All right, so we're, we're uh, I really didn't get to complete chapter 4 of Romans. I, I kind of skimmed over it. So let's find a good place to start. We were talking about Abraham, remember? And, uh, yeah. There we are. I think it's verse 17. So let's go from chapter 4 and verse 17. Um, it's not going to go super long, but then I want to, uh, uh, well, I just want to follow God. <laughs> I want to do whatever he wants. All right, so let's look at verse 17. As it is written, Romans 4, 17. Thank God we have the written word. We have we have something that is more sure than any revelation, that is a more sure word of prophecy. We have God's written word, and we can know what his will is through his word, but not exclusively. See, you can't divorce the word of God from the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of uh, Christian denominations that they, 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 they do not know what it is to have a living relationship with the Holy Spirit. They sort of, they, they don't understand that that God is speaking constantly to us. And if we're open, we can hear it. And we are supposed to. My sheep hear my voice. He's a living God, not a dead God. So he didn't, it's not that he just gave us this. And, uh, but, but anything that God will tell you will line up with this book. And that's how you know that you're hearing from God. If, it, if, it, if it's in, and, and our messages should come out of this book, not we shouldn't have something and then try to get the book to get some scripture to justify it. No, this is, this is just let, the, let God's word be the springboard. Then you keep yourself from a lot of deception and error that way. So it is written, thank God, for the written word of God. As it is written, I have made thee, Abraham, a father of many nations, before him whom he believed. Hallelujah. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, he makes alive the dead, or he resurrects you, in, he resurrects you from the dead, just like Jesus was resurrected. The Holy Spirit brings life, it quickeneth. That's a wonderful old English word. It means to, to make alive, which was once dead. It's what happens when you take the log that has been put out of the fire and you put it back in the fire and then after a little while, you know what? Not only do you heat up, but you you can light up again. Some of you, some of you, though your wood got so wet, it just smokes. <laughs> that's because of offense and that's because of, uh, because of, of choices you've made. But we have to surround, we have to humble ourselves. He doesn't want you to smoke, he wants you to be on fire. All right, I never said that before, that's interesting. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and... So not only does he make alive, but he does something else. He calls those things which be not as though they were. What does that mean? What that means is, God will never say anything that he does not want. 
See, that's what faith is. What if, what if uh, there's Jesus in the boat, and the storm is raging, he's asleep in the boat, Peter comes, Master, save us, we perish, we're perishing, save us. Oh, don't you care that we're going to drown? Well, what if Jesus woke up and goes, look, oh no, I think you're right, Peter. I don't, this storm is, I've never seen a storm like this. This is, this is too much. This is, I, I, I can't, I, we're going down. Yes, we're perishing. The boat's going to sink. You know what would happen? The boat would have bloop, 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 bloop. That would, that'd been it. We perish. Yes, I agree with you. That's why God doesn't agree with you when you come to him in fear and despair and, oh no, coronavirus is going to wipe us all out and I'm feeding on it day and night. And by the way, get off this all this con conspiracy stuff. You're not, you know what, don't feed on that day and night. That's the worst thing you can do. Okay, we know there's evil out there and it might be, some of it may be true, but I, you know what? Why don't you get your why don't you take the antidote instead of taking more poison? Just I believe in praying specifically and all that. But you know, I be careful. Be careful with just feeding on, you know, what is going on that's in the darkness and evil and just filling your spirit with that because you know what'll happen? Fear. Fear will grab a hold of you if you're not careful. And fear is the enemy. Well, what did Jesus do? He got up and he called those things that be not as though they were. He called up and he stood on the front of the boat and he said, Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. And then they all worshipped him. And said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? His word. But you see, God, Jesus, if you, if you study his words, when he's speaking, he always speaks the end result. Uh, he speaks what he desires or what his will, what he wills. That's what God does. So we're a faith being. We can choose our words just like God chooses his words. That doesn't mean every word you say, you know, you're not, you're not, obviously, you're a, you're a child of God, but that's still a big deal if you're born again. But you cannot, you cannot curse your own life and expect good. You can't speak death and expect life to come and if you notice so when when you pray when you're say if you keep establishing the problem in your life my shoulder and then you see thing i'm dying of this no you're not dying of this do you want to die of that then stop saying get the death out of your vocabulary say i'm going to live and not die I'm going to live. And then, you know, we have authority in Jesus' name. He lives, God lives inside of us. Do you want to establish heaven in your sphere of influence or do you want to establish hell? See, all right. Creation. First verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then, for some reason, as some people believe there's many, many years between the first verse and the second verse. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. But <clears throat> somehow, something happened because then it says, And the earth, verse 2, was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord hovered over these waters. Now, in the Hebrew, it says uh, there was chaos and darkness. T 
tohu and bohu is the uh, it, it, it's it's chaos and disorder. Well, God doesn't make anything without light. And if there was chaos and disorder, something must have happened between when God created the, the heavens and the earth, and then there was great darkness. Well, I don't know. We'll find out one day. We don't know some things we don't know yet. But there's hints of, of a pre-Adamic... Uh, there, there, there is hints of, of the universe itself, and science also says that, of many, many, many years instead of a short span of time. Again, I don't know. But I believe the Bible literally. But, anyway, God, the, we see the whole Trinity, even though the Lord our God is one, we see all three, let us make man in our image, all three in that first chapter, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, the Father is the one who create, created, but uh, the Spirit of God was hovering. He doesn't do anything until the Word of God speaks. The Word of God is, is uh, according to a parallel in uh, John chapter 1, the Word of God is Yeshua, Jesus, the Son. He is the Word, the living Word. So what does God speak? He speaks those things that be not. What was missing in verse 2, Genesis chapter 1, light was missing. Now, if God had gotten up there and said, oh no, it's dark, it's getting darker. <laughs> Do you think light would come? No, he called what wasn't there. He called, it's like if you have a dog. Here, Fido, Come inside. Well, the dog isn't there. You're calling the dog. God calls us. He speaks. He said, light be. And what? Light was. And if you go through that first chapter, you see over and over the way it's written, and God said, da, 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 and there was. A God said, and there was. And so what, what, uh, what is being shown there is the act of creation directly involves words. Words are creative. They produce. And uh, so, anyway, that's what God does. And so, whenever God comes to somebody in the Bible, Old Testament, say, here's Gideon, you know, Pee Wee Herman, scared of his own shadow, Gideon hiding behind the wine press, threshing the wheat. He was, but did God come to him and say, Hey, Pee Wee, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Be strong. No, not, he didn't say, he doesn't say that. He's, he, that may be his present condition. He's, he's maybe far from who God desires him to be. So the angel comes or the, the Lord or whoever, the angel of the Lord comes to, and he says, and he says, Hail, mighty man of valor. No. That's the last thing Gideon was. He wasn't that at all. He was, he was hiding from the Midianites. But by the time God got done with him, he was mighty man of valor. And that's how God changes us. And when we agree and speak what God says, we are doing just what God does. We are to be imitators of God as dear children. It doesn't mean we are God, but it means that we are agreeing with what God says about us. Maybe it hasn't come to pass yet in your heart and in your life, but your destiny is in your mouth. Your destiny is first in God's mouth. The one thing about God is he always wins. So, you know what? He's even going to win with you. Now, you can do this the easy way or the hard way. Why don't you just, if you want to stop the devil from overcoming you all the time and being in defeat, the first thing you've got to change is what you believe in your heart 
what you say with your mouth about yourself, about your life, because you will have what you say. Well, I don't believe that blabbit stuff. It, it's not about that. It's about spiritual law. It's uh, it, God, we live in a voice activated universe. Well, well, you're going to have, and you are the total of what you've spoken in the past, in every, every way, every way. Now God brings grace, and He overcomes us when we overcomes our uh, our curses when we don't know. Maybe Christian, He comes and does what we cannot do. Yes, and He walks with us, but we have to learn. We have to grow up, and the time will come when you will never in heaven nobody says any does not curse a curse is not you know all those words that you can't say on tv according to george carlin i mean that is part of it cussing cursing but really it's speaking contrary to the will of god because your words will justify you jesus said you will be justified by your words and you will be condemned by your words. By your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. Of course, the words have to be hooked up to what you believe in your heart. But that's the thing. You can't help but speak what you believe in your heart. That's the way God designed it. So, whatever's in your heart, in, your, in the inside of you, in abundance... That will come out of your mouth. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's going to come out of your mouth. You cannot stop it. In fact, it's very funny. Not funny, but it. try this sometime. Or just go up to somebody who you don't know, say, and it's a social gathering maybe, or it's a... And just listen to what comes out of their mouth for five minutes. You will know exactly what's in their heart because whatever's in the heart, it just, it comes out, it jumps out. Have you ever said stuff you wish you never said? Well, something, if you're believing lies, see, that's why Satan spends so much time trying to get you to believe lies. He is a liar. There's no truth in him. But when you get God's word, which is truth in your mouth, it is like God saying it when you say it. When it comes out of your mouth and you believe it, the promises of God. When God comes to somebody, he always comes. Anybody, you, anybody. He will always come with a promise. And he'll, he'll call what is not yet in your life as though it was. Because why? Because that's what creates it. And if we ever get down to these building blocks, and it's not easy, especially if you've been trained. I mean, the devil trained most of us to say whatever, whatever we feel. Most of the time, what you feel in your body is not actually what uh, is God's will for you. And it's temporary. And uh, so... A lot of times, the best thing we can do, just like it says in Proverbs, if you thought evil, lay your hand on your mouth. That's a good thing to do. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is just shut up. Don't say it. You know, I remember uh, I had, again, this amazing teacher that taught uh, uh, mints, slow mints and others, violin. <clears throat> She said to me one time, she said, I want you to show, I want to show you, and she did this for about a year, I want you to, to understand the thought processes I go through when I teach. She was probably the greatest teacher I've ever, I've ever known. I mean, genius level. Made so many great violinists, uh, you know, under her. But she said, most of the time, and she'll stop. She would stop. She just stop. And there's just somebody in the world. This is not. I mean, I think she was a believer at some level, but you know, not not what we would say. You know, 
fanatic, but whatever, you know, like me, but, or you and I, but she, she had some knowledge of God, but she said, Maury, I want you to watch me, and I want to show you the process, how I think, <clears throat> and she said, what I say will either will either unlock the student or it will cripple them. And that's why it's such a responsibility, what I tell them. Again, words. She didn't understand that it was the words itself, but she understood <clears throat> the psych psychological power that was in the right uh, information. Okay, so in the natural, it works this way too. You get, you get around somebody that, say, has, um, uh, you know, they their financial level is in the millions instead of the thousands or the hundreds. They operate in this realm. Or they if somebody has, uh, you know, it's just enormous success in certain areas. Every time you'll notice, if you listen to them, just just listen to them for an hour. Just listen to what's coming out of their mouth. And you will see that, at least in that area, they have no curses coming out of their mouth. Now, you go find somebody that's in, in the, the, the worst area of town, say, or, uh, or is on, you know, and just barely, barely surviving... Poverty has taken them over, uh, or whatever. Again, listen to what's coming out of their mouth. You'll see. See, instead of thinking, okay, that's they went through that. That's that's why they're saying that. But actually, it's the other way around. They're saying that. That's why they're in that condition because words have enormous power, enormous. So anyway, Miss Delay would say, and she'd sit there, I and. She, and she wouldn't say anything. She'd listen, and she'd just sit there. And we all waited. You know, sometimes it'd be one minute, two minutes, not a word, but shh. But she's, and then, and then listen to what comes out of her mouth, because it will totally unlock. It, and see, that's that's when wisdom, wisdom is an operation, in the secular realm and in the spirit realm. But it's a voice-activated universe. And when the words release the right wisdom and grace, they would lead... And it was amazing. You always felt better when you left the lesson. You felt like you were had a therapy session. Why? Because she was able to speak the right thing at the right time that... that set them free, either from fear or from whatever, you know. So, for example, say I, I okay, here's a musical example. Um, uh, I was learning, uh, she said, honey, I want you to bring in the last part of uh, the Carmen fantasy. I'd like to work with you on that. Okay, so practice, come back a week later or so. And I had gotten it. And she says, "Oh, but don't don't do it all the way up to tempo. Just do it about half tempo." Now it's a really challenging passage. It's very fast, and uh, it, it's uh, you know it's just a really challenging. And that was something that for me was a barrier. I could almost do it, you know. And she, so she wanted me to do something that I didn't I didn't feel confident about. She wanted to replace it with confidence. So then she would, and then she'd say, Honey, you know, all right. I want you to just think about your fourth finger and don't press too hard on the third. Dun, dun, dun. And then instead of, don't jerk your hand, just pretend like, like she said, pretend like your fingerboard has Vaseline on it. It just slides, it's easy, you know, just, uh, and don't, don't press on your shift, or something like that. It seems like, what? You know, that's nothing. 
But then what would happen is something clicked and it unlocked me. And then, and then she'd say, well, let's just do it a little bit faster. So she'd put the metronome up, try this. And we'd do that a few times. And then she'd say, well, how fast, how fast were you playing it? Oh, 130. He says, look, it was 160. And I didn't even realize it. Something she did in the process. And then she says, if you want to understand what I'm doing, then, then think about the process. Well, all right. So, but the laws, it's still a voice activated. So when you have God's wisdom and faith and power, and he speaks, it creates. And this book, it creates good. This book is a, a big bag of seeds. Heaven, seeds of heaven, heaven seeds. And the process is you just need to learn to be a good farmer. And you, what you need to do is begin to prophesy your future according to these promises. Because the promises of God, that is God's will for you. That's his will. So you have to learn how to become a good spiritual farmer. So every morning for past... 30-something years. That's a long time. I have just planted the promises of God every morning nearly. Uh, about Usually about an hour and a half a day, something like that. And I've got a cycle. I just, just like if you want to plant tomato seeds, you plant, I mean, you want tomatoes, you plant tomatoes. You, you want, everything produces after its kind. Seed time and harvest. That's another spiritual law. That works in every realm. It works with your money. It works with peace. It works with, in order to get a harvest. And now, I'll tell you what God said. He said that people are being shook by this in a way they have never been in their life. And I want you to sow peace and, 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 and attack the fear. And I want you to go on every day until I tell you otherwise. And every day I'm coming, what am I doing? I'm sowing God's seeds into you. Because if you want to get a harvest, you got to sow and then you got to water. And when it's the right combination, and then, so this, all these, all these beautiful promises of God in this book <clears throat> are, uh, they're heaven seeds. Where Satan fights, is in the words. That's the only place he has any authority. If you don't say it, he. if you don't speak evil, then he cannot do that to you. Now some people say, well, I don't believe that doctrine. God's sovereign. He's sovereign, but he also has given us authority on the earth. And right now we have a war over words. Uh, when When heaven comes to earth, when we go to heaven... And then when we bring the kingdom here onto the earth and uh, in the ages to come, uh, there's not going to be a pressure against God's words. But as soon as God says it, the war is on. I mean, that's the first thing. That's the first thing the serpent said to Eve in the garden. Hath God said? It's always, you know. And how did Jesus defeat Satan? in the temptation time, in the Gospels. He defeated Satan, and he defeated temptation by saying, it is written. God's word is the sword of the Spirit. Now, some people say, well, I'm going to take my sword to church, and this, this book is my sword. Well, yes and no. Actually, it becomes a sword when it is believed in the heart. You get it in there in abundance, you keep planting, you keep watering, and then you will live on a constant harvest of heaven fruit. And that's the abundant life. But uh, you will have a war to do that. Read Mark 4. It's all about God's word in your heart, keeping it in there and going full term and giving birth. What is an answer to prayer? An answer to prayer is when you carry 
God's seed until it manifests into that which is promised and you give birth to it. <laughs> and most of the time when you have unanswered prayer, it's like a spiritual abortion. Satan came and killed. He took the seed. He snatched it out of you before it came full term. So the majority, and I won't, I won't say all of prayer is like that. Not all answers to prayer are, are, are. Sometimes I do believe God says no, you know, it, it, or he's a good father. But really it's built into the system. You can't believe for something that is not, uh, is you know, there's no, you know, unless God is actually, it's his will and he's promised it for you. But God's word is his will. And he's already said it and he's already done it. Did you know God's already healed you? He's already done it. He's already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness through the exceeding great and precious promises. Second Peter, first chapter, talks about that. So we have to learn how to not only believe God's word, that's for me, but then you got to get it in your mouth. And then don't speak anything else, just that. And that's the life of love. If you stay in the love of God, you won't hurt somebody with your mouth. You won't hurt somebody with your actions or attitudes. And attitudes come from thoughts. Thoughts come and are communicated and transmitted by words. That's why you don't want to say everything that you think and feel if it is not calling those things that, that God wants that be not as though they were. So you have to learn how to be a good spiritual farmer in every realm of your life. And then what will happen is what? Heaven will start manifesting around you all the time. See, that's our part. That's, see, we're saved by grace. Saved, not just ticket to heaven saved. But we are, we are saved, delivered, healed, prospered, helped. You know, every good thing. See, if you're in the presence of God in heaven, there will be no fight to believe. It's, you're there. So God's will is being done. There's no coronavirus in heaven. There's no, there's no curses in heaven. There's no judgments in the sense of birth pangs or, you know, pestilence and plague. That, that's they, they're all that's evil. But we've got to learn to do our part and shut the door on those things. Say you've been battled with depression. I know a little bit about that. <laughs> I uh, that's been a besetting thing. And really in the past few years, I have actually can say, now, I, I'm not a depressed person anymore. That's amazing. That's a miracle. Okay. Well, why? Why didn't it happen instantly? I don't know. I really don't know. But I know one thing. I know that whatever's in abundance comes out of my heart. It will create. And your mouth... There's a miracle in your mouth, one man wrote years ago. And if you want a way out, that's the only way out. If you want to get out of, of hell in your life, then you have to learn how to start speaking heaven talk. <laughs> because you're the total of your talking yesterday. So, speak in results like Jesus did. He never said anything that he did not desire and want to come to pass. Some people really struggle with this, um, but, and I, I minister to a lot of denominational people. They like my music, and they like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not super arrogant or whatever, you know, and so they can kind of, but the laws of the Spirit are unchanging. They really are there, and this is one of them. This is a voice-activated universe. God made it that way. So if you don't want it, don't say it. If you do want it, say it all the time. And if your heart, through communion with the Lord, is in line with God's, then you're not going to speak what you want outside of what he wants. When, what, 
he wants and what you want in your heart is the same and you start believing it, it'll come out of your mouth in abundance and it will turn. It will turn and lock Satan out. And then you'll start seeing. Seeing the abundant life. I came that you may have life, but that more abundantly. The de Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he does. But I have come into your heart. And I've bring, I brought this wonderful heaven book of seeds here. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mouth. And meditate on it day and night. Day and night. And you will be like a palm tree. Or you'll be like a, a, a beautiful bay tree. You'll be like a tree that always has green leaves and is always bearing fruit right next to the water. In other words, you'll always be nourished. And, you know, no matter what happens, God, you'll be established. What you have to be established is this book has to get in your spirit until it rules your senses. When it rules your senses and you believe it more than you believe what you're experiencing in your life, things will start to change and you will see heaven come to earth. You just have to keep the sower sows the word. I'll Maybe I'll get to teach on that. And I, you know what? I got to that verse. God who, who brings alive that which is dead, quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That's the only way to victory. Soon and very soon, we're going to see Jesus. And there won't be, then the war will be over in this realm. Because you'll want to say what God says all the time. <laughs> you'll be given a new body and a new, a new uh, and perfection. And evil will be totally removed from your life and uh, the universe itself. So there will be no resistance. In heaven, in times I've been there, you know, sometimes you can think something, and there it is. It, it's just amazing. You know, if you think, I want to go, or I, I, I need to travel somewhere. And heaven's like, it looked like a planet to me. It's a place very similar to Earth. It, a lot of things are similar. But <clears throat> you go to, I'm not talking about Mormon planet, uh, no. I'm talking about the planet heaven. There's a, it, the earth is, is like heaven, but it's perfect, and it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong. We were never, never to live in a fallen state. We never, Adam chose that. God didn't choose that for Adam. Adam chose that. But thank God it's only 6,000 years. And we're seeing, we're coming to the end of time. Today I'm just teaching about calling those things. Of being, I got on that verse and I, I just started camping on it. I just keep saying it different ways because I want you to get it. You really do have something you can do in your life to change things. Stop saying what you don't want. Just stop saying it. But you'll have the fight of your life to keep from saying it. Because the pressure. But anyway, I said all that about Dorothy DeLay because she said, most of the time I'm sitting here biting my tongue, trying my best not to say the wrong thing. And I'm thinking, she doesn't even realize the root of the process. She doesn't understand the spiritual principles maybe. But it's true. She'd hold her tongue until she could, until she, and she'd work out the solution in her head. That's a genius there. It's like a big chess thing, and every once in a while, I'd get a glimpse of the process. And that was, because you think one thing's totally unrelated, or she'll say, you know, Maury, I think you should, uh, you should have a girlfriend, you know, and, 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 huh? You know, but, uh, but she was thinking of things, see. And I, I began to realize wisdom 
and that's maybe, an, I don't know. There's a lot of things connected in our thoughts, and, and if God will quicken them to us with the mind of Christ, there's nothing impossible to him who believes. But we got to get the, we got to get rid of the things that block us. And most of the time, religion, Christian religion, will block you. And and behind it is, is the enemy. And he's a deceiver. If he can get you to believe a lie, he can put something in your life in prison. And the whole battle is, is uncovering and removing the lies. Lies are like weeds in your garden. And we've got to keep them pulled. And down here, it's a fight of thoughts, words, and actions. But greater is he that's in you. So ask God to help you. Well, do like David. Lord, set a watch over my mouth. Help me not to release evil, but good out of my mouth. Uh, stay in the love realm, because God is love. Heaven's full of love. But God is a faith God. He operates according to the laws of faith. And that's gonna that's eternal. It's going to be after Jesus comes, just like it is before. Because need is not what moves God. Faith moves God. He is moving as much as he possibly can to the point of, think of electricity flowing in your house but you have to plug it in or you have to turn a switch on to get the light to work that's we have to there are laws that govern electricity the same electricity that can uh, light things or warm things or can also if it's misused kill you uh, these are spiritual laws just like they're physical laws they operate and one of them is if you don't want it, don't say it. Call those things that be not as though they were until they are. That's what the Bible actually says is the word of faith. That's what Paul said, the word of faith which we preach. Believe with your heart, speak with your mouth. Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. Sozo, delivered, healed, uh, made whole. I'm just kind of boring down on this because there's now has there been abuse of this in a in a covetous prostitution type way? Yeah, but it's nevertheless a revelation of how the laws of faith and in the spirit realm work. They actually work this way. In fact, <laughs> you know, you, you see somebody say, well, that stuff doesn't work for me. I tried it. It didn't work. Well, the funny thing is, you just had what you said. You are what you say and believe. Now, you can see this all through the Bible. There are, uh, look at David and Goliath. Look what David said. I'll take your head off your shoulders. I'll, I'll, who are you to defy the armies of Israel? David said, I'm going to come after you and I'm going to cut your head off. <laughs> I don't care how big you are. So you'll see that every everything that happens in the Bible is spoken first and then it happens. And that is the secret, one of the biggest secrets of the Bible. In order to have, to change things, you have to change the words. So that's like a master key to the whole Bible and to receiving from heaven. Another image of how God is, that he's good, and he's the, the, the it's all he's always on it's like you think about water over uh, 
instead of under. Think of it as water with gravity pushing it down. Water in a, uh, uh, say, uh, and then there's a there's some sort of a, uh, a bag that it has. And then underneath, underneath, it, if the barrier isn't there, even if you poke a tiny hole in it, what's going to happen? The water goes right out. That's what God is. That's the way good is. That's the way love is. That's the way heaven is. As soon, the whole problem is the barrier. You've got to break the the wall between, uh, and and that wall comes from evil resistance. Now that doesn't mean that we don't go through suffering, because sometimes God has to, in order to get heaven to somebody, they have to see it in somebody that. They have to see love. They have to see that God's real by the changes made in your life. And they have to taste the, the fruit of love. And so this isn't just a mechanical operation, although in one sense it is. It's God's will to bring heaven to earth. He's never changed his mind. In fact, he told the church, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's will? What's going on in heaven? So, and what's, if you want to see what God's like, look at Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the man from the town of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. It's Acts 10.38. There's a whole lot in there, and you see good and evil very clearly. Well, why does God judge the earth then? What, you know, there is a mystery there. I don't know exactly why. Every, you know, but he uses all of those things. Satan is trying to drag millions and billions to hell. And God is interrupting their journey. And he's going to do whatever he can. His main goal is to get you into heaven and out of hell. And the only way to do that is to intervene in your life. Anyway, I, I really got, I got stuck on that end of that verse there. But that means a lot to me. I've seen the biggest changes in my life when I actually started living this. And you know what? I, was, I wasn't fully living it. I was, there were leaks. There were things. It's so, it, there's so much deception, like I said. But you just keep, just keep, it is written. It is written day after day after day after day. All right, I challenge you to do something. If you don't, you know, you're, you're having problems with this, a few of you. Uh, doctrinal type. Because you still think, you still think that God's sovereign on the earth right now. He will be. But he's not right now. You know why? He gave power to man. But if you really want to see this in operation, read the book of Psalms. You'll, you'll see what David does, especially David's Psalms. He goes through all kinds of stuff, and he tells God what he's feeling, what he's experiencing. It's hopeless. It's all over. They're trying to kill me. You know, he's telling him. But then, and he's down, and he's, uh, he's, he's, he's overwhelmed. But then, there's a but there, or there's a but God. The clearest example of this is Psalm, Psalm 18. And he starts declaring... Who God is. You, oh Lord, you are my rock, my fortress, my God. In you I trust, you're greater. Praise, he starts praising God and doing the Snoopy dance in the word, in Ziklag where he lost everything and he rejoiced anyway. He encouraged himself in the Lord and it, it brought heaven to earth and defeated evil and calamity and destruction. So, and one of the things that I did for many years, I still do, 
And I have my friend Julie Meyer does it a lot. She sings the Psalms, sings the scriptures. That's great. You can sing it. You can speak it. But get it in your mouth. Get the book of Psalms in your mouth. If you if you want courage, you want strength, you want uh, you want to overcome. <clears throat> you know what the Orthodox uh, women do? The Orthodox Jewish women they go they speak the Psalms in Hebrew once a week. They go through the entire book while having fourteen kids and doing mikvahs and you know and 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 having to prepare all the meals and keep Shabbat and you know but. Victory is in that book of Psalms. You, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We we understand that. It's not people. But it's these forces of... Hopelessness is an enemy. Despair is an enemy. Weakness and, and fatigue and... Uh, of course, people coming at you like they did David, trying to kill him. King Saul running after him. That's an enemy. But not. But the book of Psalms is full of victory words. And you'll never see him stay down for very long. He, yes, he goes through just like we all do. You find every emotion of human experience in the book of Psalms. But you will also see how the praises of God turned it turned it. This coronavirus thing, the only thing that will turn it are words. And we're turning it. We are turning it. And we have turned it. We've already turned the corner. But as far as the, you know, it's it's words of life, defeat, words of death. Those are the, those are the, uh, the building blocks in the spirit realm. What are words? Words are containers. They're like little cups, if you will, or big cups. And they will contain the substance of life or the substance of death. And uh, we have, thank God, we can choose to speak life and mix our words with love, mix our words with faith, mix our words with the substance of hope and heaven. I never said it quite like that before. I hope that helps you. But I'm, I need to go now. But I want to encourage you. I'll tell you one psalm to read. And now that I, now that I, I said all that, I want to read this to you. And I want you to just notice, I'm going to read, actually, I was going to do Psalm 27. God said, no, I mean, Psalm 91. He said, no, Psalm 27. So this is a psalm of David. I want you to listen to what, he says, listen to the words in light of this revelation. Listen to it. Just listen. Listen to what he prophesies. What he says. He's, he had, he got what he said. Listen. Psalm 27, a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I like to say no one and nothing. The Lord is the strength of my life. <clears throat> he doesn't say, the Lord, when I get to heaven, then the Lord will be the strength of my life. No, he says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And we can all say, no one and nothing. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, coronavirus, flesh-eating virus, any kind of sickness, disease, infirmity, weakness, pain, oppression, depression, or death. That's not mine. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they triumphed over me. No, it doesn't say that. It says, they stumbled and fell. You see how he's declaring his future by and saying what happened in the past. He's reminding himself what happened when God delivered him the last time. He's recounting that and he's speaking it. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, 
though the stock market loses trillions, though the, the, the though uh, we're quarantined for a short time, though war should rise against me, in this will I decide, I will be confident. Will I be confident? Confident in me? No. Confident in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Why? Because you know God's going to turn it around. We know the end. We know. Even if I perish, I know it's only temporary. I, I just get to go to heaven. So I win. And then you can get up and dance like Snoopy about it. I've won. I'm in, I'm, I'm, I got it made in the shade drinking cool lemonade. It's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. See, your real enemy is fear. And that's what I've been attacking for the last almost two weeks now. Week and a half, whatever. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Because every good thing is in his presence in heaven. I want to be with him. For in the time of trouble, he shall abandon me and desert me and I shall perish and, and die. No, he doesn't say that. <laughs> Read it. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, even in times of trouble. Shall he hide me? He shall set me upon a rock. Hallelujah. I talked to you about that today. And maybe in the sweet by and by shall mine head be lifted. No, it says, and now. Everybody say now. And now, David said, and now, right now. Shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me? Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. This is heaven talk. This is how they talk in heaven. This is, this is, that's how God thinks and speaks. Victory, victory, victory at all costs. Yes, like Churchill, right? We'll take them by land. We'll take them by air. We'll take them by sea. You know, victory. What turned World War II? Words. Churchill's speech. You ought to watch that Darkest Hour. Oh my goodness, what a movie! Whew. If you have the courage to stand there and proclaim victory. You will have victory. <laughs> okay, I'm saying it so many ways that you're going to get it. I believe you're getting it. All right, I'm going to offer sacrifices of joy. I'm going to sing and I'm going to dance too because I know it's done. See, that's calling those things that be not as though they were. That's God's realm. Okay. Hear, O Lord, when I cry. Now, he doesn't mean you don't cry out to God. You do, of course. Hear, O Lord, David saying, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, when thou said it, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Agree with whatever God says. Just agree. Yes, Lord. <laughs> he said, tell them not to forsake the assembling themselves together. Yes, sir. That's what I told you. And then God wanted me to share a little bit from that's what I'm doing. But I'm going to give this to you so many ways that when the devil comes to try to steal it from you, it'll be so anchored in there, it'll at least a residue is going to remain. And you're going to learn how to talk your way out of defeat and discouragement and despair and hallelujah. Hide not. Now, do you notice David is not asking. He's commanding. He's commanding. He's decreeing like a king. We're supposed to decree life. 
Command me, God says in one place. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away. Of course, he's, he's supplicating. He's saying, please help me. But then he said, Do, don't allow the devil to take your treasure. I'm your treasure, you know. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. Victory! <laughs> Works well with the, the face like this. Victory! But you won't be there very long. I'm going to be totally straight very soon, so enjoy it while you can. I can do a Churchill imitation because of the Bell's palsy residue. You are finished in my life. I will not have you. Can you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what you're supposed to do. For false witnesses, he said, are risen up against me. He's telling, it's okay to say, this is what's happening. Help, God. King Saul is trying to wipe me out. And such as breathe out cruelty. Now, I love this. I had fainted. Now, I claimed the scripture, scripture three years ago, and I said, Lord, I don't want to keep living unless this scripture manifests. This is the one I want. I had fainted unless I had believed, first you believe, to see, you don't, you say, well, when I see it, I'll believe it. No, you'll, when you believe it, you'll see it. Believe to see, what? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's right now. I believe, one man said, <laughs> I believe in pie in the sky. After a while over there, when we all get to heaven, I believe that. But I also believe in steak on the plate. <laughs> That's right now. You can have steak on the plate and you can have pie in the sky. Why not get some steak on the plate? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. He always comes through. That was me. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. It, notice it doesn't say it doesn't say buy tribulation food, go up in the mountains, find a cave, <laughs> and bite your fingernails. And No. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, the whole book of Psalms is full of blessings and decrees and praises. And, and it's, it's the perfect, it's, it's Israel's prayer book is what it is. Uh, and uh, even the Orthodox, the, uh, they figured it out. I mean, they figured out, they may not understand the whole, the whole thing of why or, you know, how it operates. And we don't understand that fully either. But get God's word in your mouth. Replace it with whatever is coming out of your... And you know what? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, I can't control my... Take control of it. Take it. You're not out of control of your mind. Let me tell you people that lose their mind. People in hell have no more control over their will. They can't choose. You can. You take control of your mind. Just take it. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to be depressed. You, you know, God has a good future for us. As long as I'm here, I'm going to occupy till he comes. And I refuse to have anything else but victory. Victory. That's what God, thanks be unto God who always causes us to be victorious. Who gives us the victory 
in our Lord. And even if it looks like defeat, even if everything goes up or I go down or whatever in flames and not eternally, of course, but things temporary, even that, even in that, I'm going to still, I, you know what? I can still do the Snoopy dance. It, this body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. You can't defeat God. He wins. He always wins. And he's going to win with me and you. And you're not going to bow down and to fear because of what some loudmouth liars are saying on the news. You know, we, we take precaution. We use wisdom. We do what we can. But the rest of the time, praise, praise him. Praise him is the ant praise is the antidote. You want an antidote? Do the Snoopy dance. Here, I'm gonna end with this. What's the Snoopy dance? Hold on, I gotta go get a little book that I have up on my other bookcase over here. Hold on. <laughs> Keep calm. And do the Snoopy dance. Snoopy could dance no matter what. Charlie Brown was going, good grief. Lucy was <laughs> pulling the football up. Uh, Linus. Hmm? Pig pen. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of problems. But Snoopy somehow, why? He lived in this bubble. You know, he, he'd just come out, you know, everything was Joe Cool, you know. Well, that's not, that's not being unaware. It's, it's showing that, you know, our attitude is very important. And, hmm, so many, this is a wonderful little book, actually. Uh, someone gave it to me because I did a message. I was in Italy. Italy needs your prayers right now, by the way. Uh, but uh, we were in Tuscany, and I was suffering for Jesus. No, not too much suffering there. Oh, it was beautiful. About five years ago, man, every dinner was like going to heaven. It was the most amazing food. They know how to eat there. They know how to dress there. And they know Jesus', Jesus mother but I want them to know Jesus better. They seem to know Mary, but, and they know how to live, at least until this, but now, you know what? God's getting their attention. Yeah, he's getting their attention. But I said, you have to do what Snoopy did. At a certain point, that's what David did. He danced, he rejoiced. It had nothing to do with what was going on in his life. It had to do with eternal eternal promises your state you got it made in the shade if you know jesus if you don't know jesus open your heart ask him repent of your sins surrender your life to him there is no hope outside of him all right i've 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 uh wow i've riveted lots of stuff now down I've been welding and riveting and anchoring it in you so that in the storm, the devil can't steal it. I want you to, to hold on to it. And the next time when you're at your worst, da -da 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 -da. dance anyway. <laughs> you know what? You won't have to do that very long. The devil has to let go. Because that's heaven. That's heaven's authority operating. You rejoice in the Lord anyway. You just punch the devil's lights out. He has no defense against that. Rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Are you going through all stuff? All kinds of temptations, tests and trials and difficulties and corona or whatever. And worries and fears. And Are you overwhelmed? Count it all joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Start to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Kenneth Hagin tells the story of he 
was attacked with terrible heart symptoms and late at night in his bed. And the devil says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Because he had had a deformed heart and was healed and, and had all kinds of problems. And that testimony is so amazing. And he said, he said, he started doing this. He said, ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Overwhelming feelings. Wanting to kill myself, 1986. Ha, 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 ha. Despair. It's all over. Ha, 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 ha
da, 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 da. <laughs> I just know it's going to turn out all right. Everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Yes, it will. Mm hmm <laughs> You feel better? You, you edit, you, are you edified? <laughs> you, yeah, I feel it. And you know what? You can stay there. You can stay in this place. Don't, now don't let the devil steal it. I'm coming every day now. That's not a condemnation. It's just coming to encourage you. You know what? You're going to make it. We're going to get through this. This is just a temporary thing. Is it serious? Yes, it is serious. And uh, is judgment coming? Yes. Well, no, no. You don't open that door. As for me and my house, will serve the Lord. Hey, Paul said, even dying is gain. Great gain. You know. This is down here. This We just got to get our job done. This is not... This is not your final home. Not until it gets renovated quite a bit. And then we'll get a new one anyway in the eternities to come. New heavens, new earth. Hallelujah. So, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Rejoice and the darkness will become light about you. Heaven isn't way, way, just way, way up there on a planet, in a planet where God actually lives. Heaven's inside of you. Stir up. Stir up the joy that's in you. Stir up the hope that is in you. You have heaven inside of you. Just, just praise it out. Dance it out. Speak it out. Live it out. Love it out. Amen. All right. It's hard to say goodbye because I get drunk on the love of God for you. Now, what I'm going to do, I didn't pray for, well, I'll pray for you just to bless you right now. But I will also go through everyone's names. I'm getting, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to lift every one of your names to the Lord that, that write something. If you have a prayer request, I will pray. I will agree with you. And God says he'd do it. And I'm just, Simple enough to believe that. Father, bless your people tonight. Whoever you had to tune in, Lord. Thank you. Keep us safe. Keep us healed. Keep us in a place, that secret place. We enter into that place. We rest in you. We hope in you. We live for you. We rejoice in you. Lord, let the joy of the Lord come out of them and flood their consciousness, flood their emotions. Flood, and Lord, let your supernatural life quicken, it, quicken whatever has been, uh, which has died in their life, even if it's a realm of hope or dreams. Lord, tell them, hallelujah, I think these thoughts to give you hope in a future, good thoughts, good plans. Hallelujah. God bless you now. Hallelujah. If the Lord asks you to give something financially, uh, just go to, um, I think it's Glar Ministries. Uh, that's the website. We're going to get a donate button somewhere. I don't, you know, Dora has been kind of busy. She's been a little discouraged too, so pray for her. And, uh, I've been out buying all kinds of food and stuff we have. We're fine. We're fine. But please pray for me and uh, bless us financially. God will, that's the kind of thing that will come on you so fast back and so, so much more. You can't outgive God. Remember that. And just find that, uh, I think you have to go to the, there's a, there's a PayPal thing as a donate on, on the, partner if you want to partner monthly with us that would be wonderful and uh, god will bless you for it or just to help us help us uh, financially right now we're we're uh, standing in faith all right i love you i'll see you lord willing 
tomorrow. Okay? So, all right. Have a good night. Shalom, shalom.